name is Blair Styra and I'm a channel for a spirit called Tabash. Okay, um, I think I'm going to start off uh, a little bit when, um, when I was about six years old. I was always conscious of there was something more. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know how to interpret it at that age, but there was always a, a feeling of a presence of uh, more than, than what life was showing me. And I was brought up in Canada, I spent the first 11 years of my life there. And I remember walking through the forests and feeling energy and, and being conscious that um, there was just like someone was following me or someone was walking with me. I also remember going into the local cemetery and just hanging around there and, and again not knowing why I was doing that but I was actually feeling the energy, feeling the power and just felt really peaceful and, and, and harmonious. Um, in 1971 we immigrated to New Zealand and I just had those years of just growing up and doing the normal things that, that kids do. Uh, it was really in my 20s that um, I started developing this higher idea of myself as a spiritual being. Um, at, in my mid-20s, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. At the time, it was not a very good prognosis, so we started doing a lot of reading on life after death and alternative things. And we got so involved in that, that in a way we almost forgot that she had cancer. And it really triggered off in me that, as I said before, something more. And I suddenly realized I could put a title onto what I was experiencing before. And so I just kept developing with this and reading, meditating. Um, I started to recognize a certain synchronicity that was being established in the people that I was connecting up with, <coughs> the experiences that were coming my way. And I was really enjoying this um, different version of myself, if you like just opening up this door to that, that spiritual part of me. Uh, never thinking in a billion years that I would be working as a spiritual channel. I mean, in that stage, I didn't even know what channeling was. Anyway, I was living my life and um, Kay, my wife, started getting better and we started just carrying on with the whole soul stuff. And then I realized that spirit was pointing me in certain directions and I was meeting up with, pe with people who uh, were psychics and mediums and healers, etc. And at some point we went away to the UK to visit some friends and family. And while we were away, my mother-in-law passed away. We were been in Egypt actually at the time, and I remember my wife actually saying specifically, oh, something's happened to my mother. Anyway, we got back to England and, um, you know, we were told that this had happened. We had a feeling to go to uh, the Spiritualist Church, actually, which was in Belgrave Square in London. And they always have um, visiting mediums and psychics. So we thought we'd go and try this out. And there was a medium from a place called Norfolk in, in England. And he came up to my wife and gave her this absolutely perfect message uh, from her mother, which was really beautiful and accurate. And then he came up to me and he said, Oh, Spirit wants to talk to me about your career and the choices. Now at that point in my life I had seriously been considering a medical career and so the man said to me well I see two rooms and in the first room I see a big building with a red cross on it and then I see a room which is just full of light and he told me that whatever you choose you're going to excel in and it's just a matter of choice. Well obviously the, the building with the red cross that was a hospital I had no idea what he was talking about in regards to the um, other one. <clears throat> anyway, we finished our, <coughs> excuse me, the trip, came back to New Zealand. I remember reading in the paper this little um, ad and it was a woman who was a channel and she was visiting Wellington and she was giving a, a public talk. So I said to my wife, oh, let's go and check this out. This is going to be really interesting. So we went and it was, it was fascinating. And this woman, she channeled the Egyptian goddess Isis and I'd never seen a channel before in my life. And she was a full trance channel. So she um, like the way Tabash works with me now, she used the whole body. And so she was giving really, you know, quite beautiful, powerful, general messages to the audience. Anyway, then she stopped and she just stared out into the audience. And then she pointed into the audience and said, you are a channel. And I th thought she was talking about some dude behind me. And I sort of turned around and went, well, that's cool. And then she goes, no, 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 you like this, you see. And um, I hate anything like that where I get pointed out and, and, and I get embarrassed and so I could feel myself blushing and wanting to shrink into my seat. And 
the long short of it was that we ended up doing quite a few of the seminars that this woman ran and it was there that I just took another step in regards to my own self-development as, as not just as a spiritual person but as a human being as well and made a, an enormous link with really amazing like-minded people. And so we, we did these seminars for a couple of years and by this stage I was beginning to feel that there was this presence of something and, and that someone was really trying to get my attention. And I had no clue what it was. I mean, I, mean, I thought, oh, I must be my spirit guides around, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, Isis, I had a session with her and she said, you have this entity around called Tabash Salamaham and he would like to work with you. And the moment she said it, I remember feeling, oh yeah, that makes sense. I didn't feel any big, big deal about anything. And so I just started working with the idea of his name. And, and I, in my own words, I just put the thought out to him and said, yeah, okay, well, you know, let's introduce each other and, and see what this, this becomes. Anyway, so I kept doing this. And then one day I was sitting having a meditation and his, his face suddenly just appeared in my mind's eye. And it was just his face. I had no, no words attached to it, um, no feelings. It was just the face. And this went on for some time. And then gradually, as, as, as I developed, then he started talking to me. Now, it's not like you hear a voice in, in your ears. It's like you, I don't know, it sounds a good way of putting it, but you, you, you hear a thought. And, and I know it wasn't my thought because I can define my personal vibrations and what my thoughts sound like to me. And it was being, I was being guided into um, certain ways of eating and, and, and I knew it was Tabash. But I just kept working with this gently because you know, I didn't feel I needed to push it as such. I felt that I was being prepared for something definitely. Anyway, I was at work one day and in this stage I used to run a clothing shop and I came home and all day I'd been feeling this really bizarre feeling like um, you know, someone was really getting my attention. Tabash was getting my attention. I had to do something. So I got home and I remember flicking the television on and there was this, coincidentally, program on channeling. And there was this woman from, I can't remember where, being interviewed. <clears throat> and I just knew that what I was feeling had something to do with, with what this person was all about. So I watched the program and, and then I said to my wife, oh, this is really interesting. Let's give it a go. Well, I had no idea, you know, what to do and, and you know, if there were any rules or, or whatever. I didn't have the channeling manual or something. So we sat at the table and I laugh now when I think about this and we turn the lights off and lit a candle and this is the thing you sort of do, hold hands. <clears throat> Anyway, so we went on like this for about 10 minutes and it was feeling quite peaceful and relaxed and you know, nothing really was happening, but I thought, well, this is quite interesting. But then all of a sudden my body just went absolutely rigid. And I remember feeling really, really sad actually. This, this whole overwhelming sense of, of grief actually came through. And, but it didn't feel like it was my grief. It felt like it was attached to someone else. Well, as it turned out, it was actually my father-in-law who'd passed away a year before. And he started just chatting away in my head and he started telling me all these things to tell my wife, which were accurate. And so this went on probably for about half an hour and then it stopped and then I came to and um, I remember feeling all this like electricity in my body, this energy in my body and it took ages to sort of settle down. And at the time I didn't realize it was just, you know, high consciousness flowing through my system. Anyway, I sort of thought, wow, you know, this is really cool, um, you know, let's, let's give this a go again. Again, not really relating what I was experiencing to channeling or tabash as such. And then I started just doing meditations more and, and focusing on this. And um, then what happened was um, I started getting other vibrations started to come through. And I started to channel um, a specific energy called Astanya. And, and he was uh, an entity that apparently I'd had a previous lifetime with. And in those days, it was sort of sitting down, eyes closed and that sort of thing. And just a voice coming out. And he was just coming through with some really beautiful philosophies and understanding about life, etc. And it was a, a form of apprenticeship. But I always knew that Tabash, and I didn't know what his name was really at that point. I could feel his vibration, but um, Jenny had told me, but I'd forgotten about that by that stage. And then he started coming closer and closer and closer. And 
one day I was upstairs having this meditation and all of a sudden Tabash says in my head, open your eyes. And I remember thinking, no, no, I don't want to do that because I'm feeling such nice energy, nice vibration. But then open your eyes, Blair. So I did that and I wasn't actually in the room anymore. My whole consciousness had shifted into you know, where I go to when I channel. And I was actually in a room and I remember quite specifically a, a black and white tiled floor, um, window on that side, Tabash standing and looking down at me and laughing and says, why are you sitting on the floor, Blair? And he goes, up, up, come and, come and talk to me. So I stood up and I was feeling, I suppose, quite humble, really, humbled by this vibration and this presence and this experience. And, um, and at the same time, it all seemed so real and, oh yeah, this is natural. Uh, I know what this is all about. Anyway, Tabash took me and we just sat down and he just started outlaying his plan, uh, the work that we could do together and, and then the changes that he wanted me to make for this to happen and the disciplines and the focus and those sorts of things. And again, it just all made sense to me. I never felt for a moment um, challenged by it or frightened by it or, um, you, know, you know, what the hell's going on here sort of stuff. Um, it just felt, yeah, I'm actually awakened to an agreement that I made a long time ago. Anyway, finished the meditation and whatever it was and <clears throat> came back into my body. And then pretty much from that point on, um, the process um, started to accelerate and Tabash started wanting to practice working through my body quite a bit. So we did that and I remember saying to him, look, you know, I, I'm in agreement to this, but there's no way I'm going to go out there and do anything public until I feel completely at ease with this and comfortable with this and, and know that this is the real McCoy. And, and, you know, I don't feel particularly comfortable in the public eye. You know, I just like to do my thing and, and, and then get on with things. But, you know, you do what you have to do. But um, so Tabash says, that's, that's, that's good. You know, I'll, I'll make an agreement with you, make an agreement with me. And so, you know, it's a sort of a getting to know you period, I suppose. I mean, it is, this is a thing to remember that, you know, when you're a channel with spirit, you actually develop this relationship with, with this entity. And, and it's no different from creating a friendship with somebody. And so you don't just sort of dive into things, you know, you have that getting to know you period. And, and so, you know, that, that was really important as I became familiar with his vibration as much, I suppose, as he became familiar with, you know, the way that he uses my body. And then <clears throat> after a while, he announced that he wanted to do a public meeting. And so I hired a hall and um, put out some flyers and put out, the, the idea that this was happening and um, had no idea whether two people would turn up or whatever. And as it turned out, a hundred people turned up. And so I remember walking up the aisle towards the front of the, to the room and doing a little bit of a, you know, this is who I am spiel. And then uh, my heart was racing and I just thought, right, well, let's just get out this over and done with, <laughs> you know, I want to get out of here. So um, I, I went into spirit and Tabash came through and gave a really, really good teaching. And so from that moment on, um, we started doing public teachings and um, halls, but also I used to do a lot of work with the Spiritual Church Movement where Tabash would be the, a guest speaker, actually. And um, eventually we stopped doing that as, as um, my own things sort of got bigger and bigger. And then we ran public meditation teaching evenings for about 12 years. And Tabash would do a specific teaching and um, he'd take the audience through meditation using music and which were, was quite amazing, some of the experiences people had. Uh, we ran a radio program for a couple of years called Talking with Tabash. Um, we started it off as a, a Tabash would do a, a teaching and then he would open up the phone lines and people could ask questions. Um, we changed that after a while because invariably people are asking the same old questions, mainly, you know, will my house sell? Is there a man out there for me sort of stuff? Whereas, you know, Tabash is, is more than that. So we stopped that and then what we started doing was interviewing people. And, you know, I know a lot of different sorts of people. So, um, you know, we had a, quite a cross section of, of people. So Tabash would just, he interviewed the race relations conciliator who was, who's a friend of mine, um, uh, one of our local councillors in, in um, local government who was a good campaigner for um, safe food. We interviewed her. Um, we had a woman who was a channel who from England. So Tabash interviewed the spirit. <laughs> so there was these two spirits talking to each other on the air. 
and I'm sure that was a first. And um, yeah, it was it was actually great. And and then it just sort of developed into um, public work in um, moving around the country quite a bit, um, doing meditation evenings in the same way I was doing in Wellington. Um, what else did we do? We did a lot of seminars. Um, people started ringing me up and asking if we could put a seminar together. Uh, some a businessman rang me up and wanted a, a seminar specifically for his company to bring spirit into you know his his people's way of, of understanding. Um, I've run a seminar with a doctor on grief and spirituality, which we've done um, many times throughout New Zealand, which has been really really amazing. And then I met up with Dolores and uh, met her in Christchurch in, in New Zealand. It's interesting about that because I was actually reading one of her books at home and this friend of mine in Christchurch rings up and he goes, have you ever heard of Dolores Cannon? And I said, well, that's really weird you're saying that because I'm actually reading one of her books right now as we speak. Why? And he says, well, you know, we're bringing her to Christchurch to a seminar and we just had a feeling that you had to meet her. And the feeling that I had to go down there was so overwhelming. So I, I took some time off work and went down and, um, and we met and we just clicked. And, and it was obviously a, a, a re-meeting of two souls who made an agreement. So eventually she invited me to do a transformation conference in 2010. So I came over and then we did the conference and then um, went around America presenting um, lectures and, and that sort of thing. And she's since, of course, been to New Zealand several times where we've done the same thing. Um, my work with Tabash is obviously evolving all the time and you know it's not so much a matter of a, where will this take me it, it's more a matter of well, this is where I'm standing and, and uh, the thing you learn is to very much um, it's not so much trusting the process but being aware you are involved in a process that that feels natural and so I'm I suppose in sync enough with spirit after doing this for 25 years now um, to know whether that's a good thing to do or not and, and also life is, is full of other catalysts as well that takes you into a different part of journey. So, and you know, as I've written in a book I've written recently, um, my wife, um, she was recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And so again, here's another trigger for growth and development. And so again, it's once again changed my um, perspective of, of things. And, and I can feel the way that spirit's working with me is changing. Um, interestingly, I, I think because of how my wife is, it's teaching me to be more present and, and to listen on a higher level. And I'm very, very conscious of spirit around all the time. And I know that they're, they're helping us with what she's going through. And so whatever the conclusion is for her, which obviously it's not gonna be favorable, it's just gonna change my direction. And so, so it'll be interesting to see as a channel how I develop once that happens. Okay, see you later. <coughs> Hello, how are you? I am good. Nice to meet you. Blessings to you. I'll just have a bit of this water here. What would you like to know? <laughs> I think because of the way that life is changing so dramatically for everybody. So many people are thinking of physically, you know, what is it I'm needing to do? What is it I'm needing to change? You know, what's the structure that I need to? What do I have to prepare for? Obviously, invariably, you come to those situations. But before you make any major changes, you first have to go to yourself. And you have to ask yourself, what's the simplest way that I can take that step forward at this point? What makes sense to me at this particular point? I think human nature is very good at, oh, you know, give me this big major script and I've got to memorize a new way of living. 
But the simplicity is, is that as consciousness, you have the availability to all of life, all of source power, all of God's energy. And you've got to recognize that because that's intrinsically what you are, that you've got to bring this vibration through you before you can actually make the changes. And, and this is the position that humans are in. It's like this repositioning of your soul with, with source power. And when you have that alignment, it allows that vibration to flow through your physical body in a more, what I'll just say, genuine manner. And once that happens, then your physical reality starts to decide what way you want to make sense of your personal journey, the, the, the realities that you're actually creating. And so as you focus on your own sense of self and your own unique vibration, and you keep finding that alignment, then it makes sense to think that you're going to seek out for others who are doing exactly the same thing. And so gradually, collectively, you, you amass around you um, like-minded vibrations. And so you hang out with, with that particular crowd. And, and by doing that, you're also lifting vibrations, lifting energy. So really, you know, the process that humans are involved at this point is this big sort of sifting out process. And, you know, I find it interesting that in some people's cases, they find that the transition is, is quite difficult. And this is where a lot of people are, as humans say, checking out. So they're deciding to, to pass and to spur at this particular point. And it's not necessarily because um, they can't cope. But, but they realize that the vibration that they're going to have to attune to doesn't somehow fit in with, with you know, what, what they feel works for them. So they decide that their process is better evolved outside of the body rather than inside of the body. And, and, and often these souls can be exceedingly useful as guides you know, once they get out there and direct the family and the friends and so on and so forth. And, and so you know, I would probably stress to every human being um, the importance of, um, you know, before you feel that you've got to give up your job and give up your relationships and change everything dramatically. Um, just stand still and, and make a lot of peace with yourself. You know, stand still, make that peace with yourself. And then just look around you and ask yourself, right, well, at this point in my life, what really makes sense to me in the way that I think, in the way that I feel, in the way that I feel I'm doing the driving? Uh, what are the indicators of my, my life that are saying to me, uh, this is important to change this. This is important um, to see things in this light or, or to move away from that situation. But it's also about having a plan, a strong plan. You know, a lot of humans do just go diving in before they read the sign that says, don't go diving in. And, and so it's best to just sit back and think, oh, hang on a minute. Um, let's just test that water out a little bit. So I'll just sort of stone in there first and see what's in there or see how deep it is. Or if it definitely says, don't go down that road, then, you know, obviously that's an indicator to you that, that, you know, it's not for you. So as you find your plan, then you've got to look at the natural changes that you have to keep on uh, making and evolving. Because as you keep evolving, you've got to evolve your life with the way that you're actually changing. I mean, a lot of people make a lot of changes within themselves, but then sometimes forget to change their life. And they wonder why nothing's different or, or, or and simply, you know, they get caught up into those patterns and those habits and those fears, etc. Because, I mean, all of the time, even though you're not necessarily knowing you're doing it, you're, you're expanding, you're evolving, you're, you're, you're caught up into that great consciousness all the time. And then you will be given indications and most people would experience it as, I just feel different about something or, or something's changing. And, and obviously, the God part of you, as I put it, is growing. And as the God in you grows, it's got to change and challenge your human nature. And to, to change your human nature, one doesn't have to do it through conflict. One doesn't have to do it through big, huge changes. Again, getting back to what I said before, uh, what's the simplest thing or the simplest way that I can do to make a difference in that sense? And so, I mean, you've gone through your own fundamental changes. So, so the way that you've driven your life you know, you've realized yourself the importance of, I can't be that anymore. And, and I suppose saying that makes me think people are deciding, not just as individuals, who they choose to be, but on a mass level, who are we all together? And, and within who are we all together, what vibration are we creating? And with this vibration, what way can we all make a difference? 
and 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 I feel that worldwide, it it's like separate factions, if you like, of consciousness are developing, and and as they develop and raise their vibration, then it's all being linked in. So there's a lot of uh, invisible vibration that's actually moving around the planet at the moment as collective groups start to make a bigger difference because there's more and more people who are involved in that energy. <clears throat> so what happens is that that energy rises and you know you can imagine it a bit like a cloud and then another cloud coming together, another cloud coming, but in this case it's, it's energy. And so it's moving around the planet at this particular point. And as it moves around the planet, <clears throat> people like yourselves and others who are in this need to develop that part of them are starting to link in to that vibration, to, to this energy. And, and so it's like a, a, a very fine line that's connected and it's actually connected physically to all of your heart area. So your heart chakras are all connecting up with these lines of light. And so you're literally, it's like an intravenous feed, I suppose, of, of, of consciousness. Now, as it moves into your body, then a lot of people are realizing it's pushing out the old energy. So it's a bit like a, a let's call it an energy transfusion in this particular case. So, so as the new energy comes in, the old energy is, is being pushed out. And so, of course, there are repercussions to that as people um, work through certain issues or um, adjustments have to be made physiologically. Hence, the need to pay attention to uh, the mind and the body and the spirit in this process. And I feel, in, in a sense of this, the necessity to be very mindful of the way that you are paying attention. So, <clears throat> to quote, um, I think it is John Kehoe, he said something in one of his books about um, being a mind athlete. And, and so you have to train the mind into a specific training regime, like an athlete would train the body to specifically you know, get the best result. So what you are doing is that you're training your ideas so that you ensure that you're carrying ideas with you that are specific to that vibration. I, I like to, to sort of call it life by invitation. So you're inviting in the specific frequencies that you actually want, training them to work in a certain manner that is unique to you. And then having made the shifts and made that connection on a greater way, you start recognizing more of others who are doing the same thing. And, and in a way, it's a bit like uh, a light language, as I'll call it, through vibration. And so you start to attract more and more people who are of that frequency. And this is going to continue to happen. And you know, I find it interesting that at this point, there's an equality, a 50-50 in regards to harmony and conflict. And, and, and whereas before there was more conflict and there was more harmony, but of course now it's balancing itself out. And so you're getting to the point where in transition, you're moving more into that light vibration. And that's why you get to a certain degree where you don't have to look at the conflict and think, what is it that I need to do to remedy that or resolve that? You suddenly instead get to the point where now I'll just turn the light up more. I'll, I'll, I'll be more powerful. And that takes a lot of pressure off you. Instead of having to focus on what you need to work out, you just turn the volume up more. Let's have more light on that, please. And, and then you see more and you realize that that light invariably just overwhelms that conflict energy. And so by doing that, you've shifted the consciousness and you've turned what was counterproductive into something that could be productive. So you can take what was dark and, and put a light onto it. And when you put a light onto the darkness, then there's no more darkness. If you switch the lights on, well, there's a dark. And, and so it's really just a, a, a way of, of reorganizing energy, basically. So it's this complete reorganizing of consciousness. And what an exciting thing to do. And, and also, if you think about yourselves as individuals, that's exactly what you're doing. You're reorganizing yourselves. You're reorganizing your mind, your body, and your spirit. And then once you've done that, then you have to organize your mind and your body and your spirit to work together, to be complementary to each other. Now, they actually know that that's how it works because your whole systems are programmed to know that. And, and so as you remind your systems through your self-development, then they wake up to that idea and they start pulling their energies together. 
and, and occasionally you might get a renegade thought that takes your mind or your body and your spirit onto some sort of tangent. But it's just a matter of, I, I think it's that concept of leadership, showing a high level of leading uh, your God nature and into a way where your body and your mind is completely linked in all the time. And there's a phrase which goes, life with the knowledge of God is always going to be productive. Life without the knowledge of God is always going to be destructive. And, and humans have moved away from destructiveness as a reality. And they're moving more into life and, and creation as the reality. But it's an education process because this planet has been run so much through fear and, and, and ego-based vibrations that it's distributed its energy to certain groups of souls who run the show, so to speak. And, and, and then by doing that, they've taught people to deny access to everything. And I'm not just meaning God. I'm meaning all information that's available, whether it comes from spirit, whether it comes from alien forces, whether it comes from other dimensions or parallel universes. All this information is available to everybody. But then, if you look back in history, uh, let's make people afraid, and that way we can make sure that they don't know what's really going on. If we don't do that, then they'll just be like us, which means that, you know, we won't be powerful anymore. And, and, and so you saw this um, distribution, if you like, of light energy. And that's just an evolutionary thing as well, because people, you know, were born in their histories and they became further and further away from light and they allowed themselves to accept that the leader or the shaman or whoever it was, the chief, they are the ones with all the power and we are the ones who have to be told what to do. But now you're at a point where you're all the people with the power. And of course, you know, then you look at the people who supposedly have the power and, well, how do we change this? How do we get rid of this? And you see it. You see it with all the different ways of um, the breaking down of political systems and economic systems and social systems. You see it, you know, worldwide. And, and, and this is, as everything evolves on a collective level, it's the displacement of what was so that therefore you're able to be involved in the new energy. And the new energy has to be organized carefully and equally and balanced so that therefore you have the harmony where true leadership comes from. In the future, and I'm just thinking about it from a political perspective, in the future what you'll have is you'll have equal governments in regards to um, male representative, female representative, because it's all about that harmony and the balance. I mean, if you think about it, it's mainly patriarchal, and so the male energy overwhelms and overpowers. And so, but even some of the females who are involved in politics, they're still overtly strong in their male power. So it's got to bring that, that, that balance and that harmony into that. And true rule can only come about by having that. And, and, and so, but of course, you know, in, in some countries, um, it's still people who are very aggressive, who are really, you know, pulling the strings as such. And, and yet, again, all that's changing. So I think there's a, a, a strong move away from, from evolution. But it's interesting, isn't it? You look at countries worldwide that for many decades have invested financially in conflict. What's happening to those countries? And, and so a lot of those countries karmically are finding themselves, you know, in a position where there's a lot of difficulties because you can't sustain such a way of, 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 of being. You can't invest in conflict and not have it come back on you in some way. And so you're seeing the breaking down of the superpowers, as people say, and a redistribution of, of, of the energy on a world level. And, and, and so, but it's a process that you can't really put a time span onto because, you know, if you, people do, they just get caught up into too much of an impatience vibration. So it's best to, as I said, do what you can, when you can, how you can, 
as an individual. You know, you look to your own systems. Um, economically, what, what changes can I make to be more profitable and bring more balance physically, emotionally, socially? You know, what are the changes I make? Because it's me as the individual that's going to make a difference to the collective power. So you will have a responsibility to the way the world is going to become. And, and it is not a hard task. You just have to live your life consciously um, in the most authentic and genuine fashion that you feel that you can. You do what you can, when you can, how you can, without pressure. But as I said, if you turn the light on, then you see everything. And I think I shall finish with the concept of enlightenment. And to me, enlightenment means to be in light of life. So when you turn all the lights on, you see everything and you realize that everything is just always there and it never goes away. But what you do is you get to a point where you're able to take a situation and position it in a way which works better for you. Or you position it where you don't need it anymore. And you know it's there and you know it's always going to be there. But you don't have a, a link with it anymore because you've decided with your mind and with your experiences what you prefer. And I shall end on that note. Thank you.